Canada. Known as the largest country in the Western Hemisphere, and the second largest country in the world after Russia, is a beautiful place. Consisting of ten provinces and three territories, it borders only one country, the United States of America. Filled with famous landmarks, an example being the Niagara Falls and other historical wonders, it is a good place to live or visit. Canadians are known around the world to be nice people. The country is typically praised for its affordability, access to education and health, political stability, individual freedom and environmental protection. These and many others are reasons why it's become a famous destination for international students. Currently, over 600,000 people hold a valid study permit in Canada. It was no surprise when Jun Lin, a Chinese man, decided Canada was where he wanted to be. He was drawn to the country and wanted to start a new life there. Jun Lin, also known as Justin Lin, was born on December 30, 1978, in Wuhan, China. He had a good life growing up. It's not known when exactly Jun Lin got married, but he was married for a while and eventually got a divorce stating irreconcilable differences as the reason for it. In 2010, Jun Lin moved to Canada, settling in Montreal, Quebec. He wanted to get to know the West and liked the French culture. His goal was to study computer engineering there. He began studying at Tyark College, a language school in July, 2011. In 2012, he registered as an international student to study computer engineering at Concordia University, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Jun Lin had a secret he was keeping from family back home. He was gay and couldn't live life as he wanted in China. To him, being in Canada was like a breath of fresh air and he could finally live life as he wanted. He soon came out while in Canada and even became a gay rights advocate on his campus. It is reported that he had lived with his partner, a Chinese man, for a while after moving to Canada. His family back home had even met his partner a few times, but had no idea he was his boyfriend. His family soon started pressurizing him to find a good girl and settle down. This caused problems in his relationship as his partner wanted him to tell his parents about but he wasn't ready. So, they ended the relationship. After his relationship ended, Jun Lin became lonely and felt like he was missing a part of him. He began using the famous Grindr app and other web applications to meet other men, and potentially, find love. In his quest for love, Jun Lin also used Craigslist. While browsing through the site, an ad caught his attention. He responded to the ad and that was how he met Luca Magnata. Luca Magnata was born Eric Clinton Kirk Newman on July 24, 1982 in Scarborough, Ontario, Canada. Being the eldest of three children, he experienced firsthand his parents' inability to raise a child. His father had been diagnosed as paranoid schizophrenic manic depressive in 1996 and his mother was described as a germaphobe. She had an extreme fear of germs and an obsession with cleanliness. It was so bad that she would often lock the children out of the house to keep it clean. Luca and his siblings were homeschooled so he had no friends. In 1998, he enrolled at I.E. Weldon Secondary School. This was his first major interaction with people outside his family. Classmates and teachers remember him as vain and often a target for bullies. He left the school in the year 2000. At the age of 20, Eric moved to Toronto where he began working as a stripper and later, appearing in adult films. In 2003, he befriended a 21-year-old woman who was mentally aged between 8 and 12. He sexually assaulted her and took videos of the whole thing. He also convinced her to apply for a credit card eventually racking up $10,000 in credit card debts. 
The police got a hold of him and charged him with fraud and sexual harassment. The sexual harassment charge was eventually dropped. In court, a medical report claiming he had significant psychiatric issues was submitted leading to him being let off lightly. He pleaded guilty and received a nine-month conditional sentence with 12 months of probation. Now, I think, the judge should have ordered him to seek treatment for his psych issues but unfortunately, that didn't happen and the entire community ended up paying for it. In 2005, he appeared as a pin-up model on the Fab Boy page of Fab magazine. In it, he called himself Jimmy, a Russian-born, who hoped to become a homicide police officer. On August 12, 2006, Eric legally changed his name to Luca Rocco Magnata. He began living a virtual life with over 70 Facebook pages and 20 websites and discussion forums. He planted different rumors about himself on his pages, websites, and any discussion forum he could access. He praised himself and attacked people he disliked. In 2010, Luca's postings became darker, but no one knows what triggered the change. He posted a link to a video showing a man being beaten to death on his Facebook pages. Soon after, he posted a video on YouTube titled One Boy, Two Kittens, in which he deliberately suffocated two kittens in a plastic bag with a vacuum cleaner. He later published a second video of himself, this time drowning a cat in a bathtub and a third video showed him feeding a cat to a python. In January 2011, a private Facebook group identified Luca Magnata as the person in these videos. He was dubbed the Vacuum Kitten Killer by online animal activists and a $5,000 reward was put out for bringing him to justice. The internet community which had identified Luca reported him to authorities, warning that after committing acts of animal cruelty, he might pose a threat to humans. In February 2011, Toronto police began investigating him in connection with the videos, after receiving numerous complaints. On May 15 and 16, 2012, several posts appeared online about a new video that would soon be uploaded. It was going to be titled, One Lunatic, One Ice Pick. By then, Luca had moved from Toronto to Montreal. Luca Magnata then posted a Craigslist ad which June Lin responded to. At this time, June Lin had moved out of the apartment he shared with his ex and had moved into an apartment with a roommate. The two men made plans to meet. They decided to meet at Luca's apartment on Thursday, May 24, 2012. This CCTV footage from Luca's apartment shows the two men entering the building. Unfortunately, only one would come out alive. On the evening of May 24, 2012, at around 9 p.m., June Lin sent a good morning text to his ex, as his former lover would have been starting his day at the time. This was the last text he ever sent. And on the evening of the same day, he met up with Luca. His boss became suspicious when he didn't show up for his shift the next day. On the 25th of May 2012, a video with the title One Lunatic, One Ice Pick was uploaded on the site bestgore.com. The video depicted a naked male tied to a bed frame being repeatedly stabbed with what appeared to be an ice pick, later revealed to be a screwdriver, and with a kitchen knife, then dismembered, followed by acts of necrophilia. The perpetrator used a knife and fork to cut off some of the flesh and gets a dog to chew on the body. Canadian authorities obtained a more extensive version of the video and said that cannibalism may have been performed. A friend of June Lin went to his apartment on May 27 after receiving a call from his ex saying he hadn't heard from him in 60 hours. At the apartment, he was nowhere in sight but his school bag and personal identification documents were found. After not finding his friend at the home, he tried Lin's workplace, 
and discovered that Lin had not shown up for work for two days. His friend went to the police but was told to inquire with the university. On May 26, 2012, an attorney from Montana attempted to report the video to Toronto police, his local sheriff, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, but the report was dismissed by officials. Best score viewers also attempted to report the video. Canadian authorities later confirmed its authenticity and identified the, the person on the receiving end of the torture to be an Asian male. On the 29th of May, Lin's friend having heard of a video trending online, decided to check out what it was. At court, he said he immediately knew that was his friend. He went back to the police to tell them about this. At 11 a.m. on May 29, 2012, a package containing a left foot was delivered to the national headquarters of the Conservative Party of Canada. The package was stained with blood, had a foul smell, and was marked with a red heart symbol. Another package containing a left hand was intercepted in a Canada Post processing facility, addressed to the Liberal Party. In Vancouver, police said staff at False Creek Elementary School opened a package containing a hand. Another parcel containing a foot was discovered by staff at St. George's Private School for Boys. Police now had parts of a body but no leads. Finally, police got a lead. A janitor had found a suitcase containing a decomposing human torso at the garbage pile close to an apartment building. This was confirmed to have the same DNA as other body parts that had been found. Footage from the building's surveillance cameras showed a man bringing the suitcase alongside numerous garbage bags outside. The man was identified to be Luca Magnata, who lived in the building. When police got into his apartment, they immediately knew they had found the crime scene. The apartment had blood all over with blood stains notably present on the mattress left in the unit and in the refrigerator. Also, there was a message scrawled in red on a wall, reading, If you don't like the reflection, don't look in the mirror. I don't care. Apart from the blood splattered evidence, the apartment was otherwise empty. Luca Magnata had fled the country on May 25th, a day after he killed Jun Lin. An arrest warrant for Magnata was issued by the Service de Police de la Ville de Montreal, SPVM, later upgraded to a Canada-wide warrant by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP. On May 31, 2012, Interpol issued a red notice for Magnata at the request of Canadian authorities, and for several days before and after his arrest, his name and photo were displayed prominently at the top of the home page of the Interpol website. The red notice requested that Magnata be provisionally arrested pending extradition back to Canada by any Interpol member state. Luca had booked a round-trip ticket from Montreal to Paris. After his arrival in France, his cell phone signal was traced to a hotel in Bagnolet, but he had left by the time police arrived. From France, he traveled to Berlin, Germany by bus. On June 4, 2012, Magnata was apprehended by Berlin police at an internet café while reading news stories about himself. He tried giving fake names at first, before finally admitting who he was. His identity was confirmed through fingerprint evidence. On June 13, 2012, the four limbs and the torso were matched to Lin using DNA samples from his family. On the 18th of June, Luca Magnata was extradited to Canada. On June 19, 2012, Magnata appeared in court by video link to plead not guilty to all charges through his lawyer. On July 1st, June Lin's head was recovered at the edge of a small lake in Montreal's Angrignon Park after police received an anonymous tip. Lin's body was cremated on July 11th, and his ashes were buried on July 26 at Notre Dame de Neige Cemetery in Montreal. A preliminary hearing began on March 11, 2013. June Lin's father, 
Diren Lin, traveled from China to attend the hearing. On March 13, one of Magnata's lawyers resigned, due to a possible conflict of interest. On April 12, 2013, Magnata was indicted on charges of first-degree murder, offering indignities to a human body, distributing obscene materials, using the Postal Service to distribute obscene materials, and criminal harassment. During the trial, Lucas' defense team argued that he was in a psychotic state at the time of the crimes and could not be held responsible for his actions. Prosecutors, on the other hand, argued that the murder of June Lin was organized and premeditated and that Magnata was purposeful, mindful, ultra-organized and ultimately responsible for his actions. The prosecutors had a valid point. Luca had made posts about a video that would be uploaded soon, 10 days before he met up with June Lin. He knew what he was going to do and didn't commit the crime in the spur of the moment. It was pre-planned. The trial lasted 12 weeks and included 10 weeks of hearing testimonies. The jury of eight women and four men received final instructions from the trial judge on December 15, 2014, and was sequestered before beginning its deliberations the next day. On their eighth day of deliberation, they returned a verdict of guilty on all charges. Luca Magnata will serve a mandatory life sentence and will be eligible for parole after 25 years. He was also sentenced to 19 years for other charges, to be served concurrently. He filed an appeal for the convictions to be annulled and a new trial ordered. He claimed that the verdicts were unreasonable and unsupported by the evidence and the instructions but withdrew his appeal on February 18, 2015. All Jun Lin wanted was to start afresh somewhere else and live life as he wanted, to live his truth. Unfortunately, he didn't get to do that. When Luca Magnata was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia as a teenager, he should have gotten help. But he didn't, and that cost an innocent man his life. This case shocked the city of Montreal and Canada as a whole. Thankfully, Luca Magnata is paying for his crime. I hope he remains there for a very long time. Thanks for